Welcome into this space, which I've baptized the Shrine of Not Knowing. Which is quite an invitation, right? To postpone. Or to leave out at the doorstep, outside at the doorstep, our, our ideas and come in sort of barefoot. It's, it's a nice invitation for the mind. It's just really the mind won't be, won't have to work. I mean, of, of course our minds will work no matter what, but we won't be relying on our on our conceptual knowledge. So you can just settle here in the shrine of not knowing and settle in the silence that is the first face of this not knowing. Feel the silence like a space that is open. And we could replace the word silence by the word presence. They're synonymous here. Silence, presence, not knowing. But um, sometimes not knowing can be a scary thing for the separate one, for the for the mind who's always seeking safety, security, and the way the mind reaches safety and security is with convictions, ideas, preferences, opinions, all that kind of thing. So not knowing for the mind is 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 scary. It's, but the not knowing here is imbued with kindness and sacred. It's sacred not knowing. You're in a shrine. It's not knowing is the ultimate kind of knowing. So just just to send the message to your body minds that it's it's okay, it's safe to let go a bit. to trust. So we're allowing our minds to sort of unravel and thoughts will come and go and The body is another area of experience that often sort of seeks and asserts a sense of safety through contraction, through holding weight, through feeling quite solid, quite boundaried. In fact, through feeling also quite frightened. That's a way that the body curiously 
perpetuates a sense a sense of, of of safety it's like yes i am this separate frightened one and in a funny paradoxical way that is the only safe position for the separate entity So tasting our bodies right this moment, such as they present themselves. Feel your bodies. And send a message from the heart that this space is a space where we can explore letting go of the body as well well as the letting go of the mind but that there are no obligations that it's a real exploration and that in fact if at the end of our session all you've done is tasted the fear the tension the resistance that that already is an act of welcoming and love towards the body. So we're not here together to impose anything or change anything. Just allowing our experience moment by moment to begin with. Welcoming, saying yes. But I should rephrase that. It's not something we need to do, this welcoming or saying yes. It's more that we've put ourselves in the way of welcoming. We've put ourselves in the way of the yes saying, which is this openness. When we gather like this in the shrine, we really make it palpable, this openness that is welcoming, that is yes, saying. We don't, we don't create it, but we invite it to make itself known. That's our shrine, that's our shared habitat. Nothing to change. But of course, there will be the idea or the desire to, to change something. That's fine. No need to change that. In other words, the nothing to change is 
not something you can do. It's I don't know, it's like a caress. It's a truth, nothing to change. It's not like we have the power to change anything anyway. That's just a sort of inflated belief of the ego. Just like you can't sort of manufacture the arising of my voice, the unfolding of it and the, dissol the dissolving of it. It's the same with your thoughts and with your sensations and feelings. And that's good news, not for the ego, but <laughs> well, I think it is good news for the ego because actually the person, you know, the person that we each individually are, it's good news to know, to recognize that we don't really control our thoughts and our feelings and the sound of Ellen's voice. It's a relief. We can just take the position of discovering whatever arises moment by moment. Tasting. So feeling our bodies right this moment, just tasting the body, the body of now, not the body of memory, just now the body. The substance of the body, temperature. Gently, don't make a big deal out of whatever I invite you to explore. Take it gently. It's, it's, it's not meant to create any tension, any focusing of attention, more just like a gentle invitation. Feeling the body. Feeling the tingling of the palms fingers, don't feel you have to direct your attention towards the hands as if they were at a distance from you, but that that's a very ingrained habit, but rather tasting the sensation of the hands from the point of view of openness. You have no idea or image of hands, just the raw, tingling, warmth. 
Hello, hands. And then tasting the sensation of your hips and your thighs and your the bowl of your pelvis against the support of the chair or the cushion. The temperature, the color, the texture, the movement. There's absolutely no right or wrong. Just letting it talk to you, letting that, that area, pelvis, thighs, hips, knees, legs, calves, ankles, feet, just talk to you. Tasting the quality that we call weight. But because your your point of view is the openness, perhaps you can feel that you really you you're not you're not located in the hips or the pelvis, and then the floor, the cushion would be other than you, but rather from the point of view of openness, your hips, your pelvis, the cushion, the chair, the earth are really one continuous experience. See if you can sort of say yes to that without any effort. Yes to body earth. Dropping the legs, dropping the hips. Dropping the earth into itself. Not a hard earth. If, if there is a feeling of hard, see that that's just a projection of your mind. Your mind is hard. Something is hard and it gets projected onto the earth. All you need to do is say soft, soft. And then your shoulders, feel your shoulders. Dropping your shoulders down through your arms. Take the time, these words shouldn't create something mechanical. And sometimes the words just can't help but create something solid. See if my words can undo what is solid. Shoulders liquid, liquid shoulders, flowing. River arms, flowing down. Palms of the hands like deltas of a river. and the space beyond the hands like the ocean, river arms flowing into the ocean. Now feel the, the whole body is learning something about how it can surrender weight. Feel the whole body 
and allow it to explore a, a letting go of weight in all directions. Like a cloud that suddenly realizes its cloud-like nature. Again, go gently and don't feel you have to manufacture something. Don't create any tension with my invitation. A cloud-like body is definitely not a tense body. But I know that our bodies are riddled with tension. And so as we explore together, and if the ripples of the riddled body surface, just allowing those those ripples of tension to, 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 to surface fully and maybe to touch the openness. Maybe. Just absolutely no violence, no agenda with whatever arises. Feel your face very alive. Feel your forehead and your eyes, your temples, your cheeks, your cheekbones, your nose, your nostrils. The space between the nose and the mouth. Feel your lips, very sensual. Your cheeks, your jaw, your chin, your ears, your scalp, your whole face coming to life. You don't have to live behind it. You can let it live in openness, which you might want to make, take your stand as or in. And the face can undo, come undone. Your lips, let the bubbles of tension that live embedded in the lips bubble up. And let the tensions, bubbles of tensions that live embedded in the eyeballs. Bubble up. And whatever the face is doing, whatever weird things, how many, however many eyes you have, and maybe you have more than one mouth, and maybe you have more than one two ears, just let your face morph and move and Picasso cubist face. Feel the whole body again as one, one global, Vibrating, alive, pulsating thing, not thing. 
pulsating non-thing. Hello body, welcome back to life. It might be painful to listen to the body like this, because it's a bit like a thawing process. We're so used to sort of not feeling the body, living up in the headquarters of thinking. So when we spend time like this, to begin with, it, you know, it, the finally the body can cry and howl sometimes. Ah, it really hurts. The shoulders or the, the hips, you know, you might find that your thighs are glued to your hips, that there isn't any space or that your eyebrows are furrowed or that your jaw is so clenched. So go very, very gently. allowing ourselves to taste the geography of our of our suffering of our of our isolation of our separation what is it made of this conditioning at the level of the body And just for a little bit of respite from the stillness, let's collapse our back very slowly, just rounding your back. So if you're supported by the back of a chair, maybe move forward on your chair so that your back is unsupported. And then very slowly, rounding the back, the lower, middle, upper back. And then just, just tasting your belly, the movement of the breath. If you're sitting on the floor, which I am, keep your, keep your back rounded and very slowly extend your legs forward onto the floor, very slowly so that you can stay with a raw tactile sensation. If you're on a chair, um, you could just gently elongate your legs in front. Your back is still rounded. Your legs are now either extended on the on the ground in front horizontally or extended forward on the chair. And then just move back a little bit more with your with your back body holding your abdominals in a little bit so you're supporting your lower back and feel that there's space in your hips. Dropping the shoulders and now slowly moving the head forward first. The torso follows. And when your torso still rounded is in the correct position above your hips, slowly feel a line of energy from the pubic bone very slowly unfurling the torso. Don't feel you're not doing it, but rather it's happening. The torso is gently, more like a, a fragile flame. It's coming to vertical, but it's not rigid. And then again, let your back round slowly. It's like the back body is liquid, thick liquid, rounding the back, then pause and just drop the shoulders, relax the breath, surrender the legs to the contact of the floor if you're on the, if they're, if they're laying on the floor, dropping the hips, dropping the thighs, 
And now if you were sitting cross-legged, gathering back your legs very slowly, if you're sitting on a chair, just bringing your legs back to an ordinary position, your back is still rounded. And now from the pubic bone, the little line of energy unfurling, very tactile, very sensual, the whole front of the torso, caressing the space in front. It's a very small movement. And you get to see the moment where the doer, the mover-doer, comes into the picture and wants to take charge and wants to do it fully and wants to push and wants to extend and wants to do this and that. And maybe you, you move back a little bit. You let the spine drop a little bit. You don't let the mover take a hold. Feel your fingertips, wherever they are. Let the palms face down so that the fingertips are touching either the floor in front of your legs or your lap or the edge of the chair. Feel your fingertips really alive. And they're moving forward. And then your arms are just rising off the chair, the floor, rising up to the horizontal, long arms, long fingers. Resting the arms on the horizontal plane. So your fingers, the four fingers are, are vibrant, alive. They're not sort of dead. And the thumbs are vacant. Let the thumbs be vacant. And now drop your shoulders into your hips sensation of your shoulders like two balls of energy just drop them into the hips and the hips and the legs hanging down into the earth your arms are flowing they're lines of energy and now right arm rises up to the ceiling slowly 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 don't create a shoulder no shoulder Stop before a shoulder comes into the, onto the radar. Empty the shoulder so the right arm is falling into the right arm. And the left arm resting on the space. And now turning the head slowly towards the left side, just a small movement, the, the head is like a helium balloon. Welcome the posture, surrender the posture, let it radiate in all directions. And then slowly we switch the right arm flowing down to the horizontal, the left arm is Blowing up, there's no weight, and the head is turning towards the right. And it might be that it's unpleasant, but there's no psychology. It's not dangerous. Let the unpleasantness be tasted rather than resisted. Make sure the left arm doesn't go beyond that threshold where you create a shoulder or a doer, yes, resting that left arm into the left arm, drop the left hip, drop the right hip, and then feel the whole posture, just let it expand in all directions, empty it wherever it can be emptied, and then slowly you come back, arms, the head,
very slow, coming back as, as much a part of the posture. And then just taste the reaction. Let whatever sensations unfolding, let, let, let them unfold. Hello, body. Hello, openness. Let the body and the openness mingle. And then again, rounding the spine. Pressing the space behind with the back body. Feel your fingertips. Very alive, touching the space in front of the legs or the chair. Feel the fingertips touching the texture of whatever is being touched. Is it is it what is it? Is it wool? Is it silk? Is it leather? Is it polyester? Is it hot? Is it warm? Is it humid? Slowly feel alive fingertips. And then the fingertips are traveling right and left with the arms opening. Take your time. You can't go fast. Your need, the fingertips need to be hyper vigilant looking for shards of glass. When your fingertips arrive at hip at the level of the hips, just pause and then empty the shoulders through the fingertips into the earth. There's no right or wrong, just listen, just follow, listen, taste. And now the fingertips traveling, continuing on their way towards the back of the body. Careful, the shards of glass. If you're on a chair, I don't know, find a way, find a way. Maybe you have to move forward on the tip of the chair. So now the hands are in the back and you rest the pads of your fingers down on the floor. Your, your thumbs are, are directed towards the back of the body and your fingertips are pointing away from your torso. And then again, feel the contact with the earth. Drop your shoulders. We're not pushing and wrestling the floor with the hands. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a sensual meeting, hands and floor. Your back is still rounded. Your hips, is there space? And now slowly from the pubic bone, without pushing on the hands, the line of energy, the flame rising up, slowly you're licking the space with your torso. And then you can draw the elbows towards one another, an arch between the shoulder blades, just a little bit. And again, not collapsing onto the support of the palms, whole front of the torso very alive, the face towards the ceiling if it feels right. Long inhale, long exhale. Feel the whole body. Empty the hips, empty the legs into the earth. Yes, yeah, slowly we come back, slowly the spine back to the vertical and the arms come back slow. Oh. 
I know it's very slow, this exploration, which is an opportunity to catch that habit of anticipating, of rushing, of mechanizing the body. Be courageous here. Be willing to feel what we usually don't want to feel. Feel the coming and the going of the breath. Without any agenda to change the breath to begin with, just as it is, the in-breath, the out-breath. What's happening with the abdomen, with the in-breath? Is it held? Is it allowed to move? Just taste your breath as it is. And now taking charge of the breath a little bit, elongating the breath a bit. Lengthening the in-breath. A pause at the top, then lengthening the out-breath. And if you know Ujjayi breath, the filter at the back of the throat, you apply it creating a beautiful sound, even, smooth from the beginning to the end of the breath. Visualize a tree one meter in front of your body. With the inhale, you Caress the tree from the roots to the top of the tree. The pause with the out breath. Caress the tree from the top all the way down the length of the trunk to the roots in your own rhythm. welcoming whatever comes as resistance, but stay with this visualization of the, bre the breath caressing the tree from the roots to the top, in breath, long out breath caressing from the other way. And now take away the, the tree and with your breath, you're filling the space 
in front, from your body to the wall in front, in breath, filling the space as if with water. Smooth, slow, ujjayi, with the out breath, emptying the space. Find your own rhythm. Go gently. Let it happen. Let it find you, the rhythm. Use the visual to help you really feel the breath, feeling the space in front. The pause, empty the space. Yes, let the breath be natural. Just listening, no reason to do any of this, apart from reawakening and listening that is free. and inviting the body to empty itself of anything it doesn't need. Inviting the breath to remember its organic, ocean, ocean-like nature, each breath like a wave, and the breather being the ocean. Slowly, that's turning the torso towards the left side very slowly, like a, a ghost. And again, don't, don't let the doer come in. So stop right before the doer mover comes in. Cloud-like body. Drop the hips, drop the shoulders. Fall in love with dropping whatever would like to be dropped. And now the torso turning towards the right side, but you don't do anything. You just taste this ripple. You're the openness and there's a ripple going on, which you are just tasting. You can rest your hands on your right thigh. And then you just drop the shoulders, the face, the hips, the breath. And the torso comes back to the center. And the arms are floating into the space in front, rising up. Like a Tai Chi master, there's no weight, it's easy. And the arms open, carve the space right and left, feel the density of the space being opened by the hands opening to the right and the left. Yes, and now, uh, let's hope I can explain this without you having to open your eyes, but you might have to. So flex your left hand and then bring your right forearm towards your chest. So you're, you're folding your, your right arm 
And now feel your torso moving towards the right side and you're looking in the direction of your left hand. You can even look, you can open your eyes. And if you need to look at me, look at me. Yes, good. And feel like, you know, those Indian dancers, those Indian statues, that's what you're trying to feel from the inside. We don't really care what it looks like, but A sensual Indian dancer. Now empty your shoulders, empty your hips, and then slowly we switch. Now you don't have to look, just feel it. Slowly, right arm extending towards the right side, left arm folding, head turning, torso moving towards the left. You can look over there to the fingertips. And again, we switch slow, feel that the movement is happening in something liquid and easy, it's rippling. And flexing the hands. Empty everything, like a statue. Armpits are open and then switching again slowly. Don't do it, feel that it's sweet, happening, smooth. Yes. And the body comes back, feel that it comes back into you. You're the openness. Let the body come back to a place that is that is home, the shoulders, the arms, the torso. Just feeling the reaction in the shoulders, in the hips, in the face. And now slowly the neck and the head tracing a circle very slow, smooth. Instead of living in the head and feeling that you are moving, feel that you live as the openness and just taste this ripple. Try, you might not succeed. You might go back and forth. Now you're in the head, behind the eyes. Now you are the openness, just tasting the ripple of Ellen's voice, of the movement. And then we go the other way, or rather we taste the other way. Slow. Nobody doing it. Is the feeling. Or cosmos is doing it. Cosmic event. Now let the head go, come back to a neutral, a happy neutral. Let it do it by itself. Feel the whole body. Feel that cloud-like body. Hello, body. Feel the habit of, of sort of feeling that you're inside the body and that you feel the inside of the body is sort of me. And it's intense. And, and then there's outside the body somehow, which is delineated by the skin, which you don't feel. 
that's the hab habit. But now explore and first of all, use your imagination and imagine or visualize or think even that, no, I don't have a border in this moment. I don't really know where my border is. Let's play with that. So that the feeling of an inside my body is allowed to spread into the feeling of outside my body. And the feeling outside my body is allowed to permeate the feeling inside my body. Don't think, once you've sort of sent the thought, then stop thinking and just see what happens. You don't even have to manufacture a feeling, just see. Inside, outside is one same space. And not just sort of front, side, and back, but even up and down, even into the ear and above the head. And I'm, again, I'm fully aware that many of us are also feeling areas of density, of, of, of having a border. And don't fight that, but you can just gently challenge that that is actually your border. It's probably more like accurate to say that it's density. That's pretty much all we know. There may be very strong me in the body feelings that we then conclude are, are where we live, or that's that's our that's that's where I I live. That's that's my that's my envelope. That me, the body feeling is is is. That's it. But actually, if we look closer, you know, the me, the body feeling is constantly changing and it's quite porous if you look at, at its edges. You know, why don't you, you know, you can explore right now, just choose any me, the body feeling in your head or in your chest. And it's pretty elusive. So then let's now introduce another thought. Uh, these thoughts are, are friends because they are stepping stones to feelings. The thought or the idea is borderlessness. No borders. Just say that word to yourself or hear the word as I say it, borderlessness. Make, make a friend out of that word. So that the feeling of a border might arise in borderlessness. A feeling of being located might just be a, a strong, intense sensation floating in borderlessness it's a possibility
And just don't, don't do anything now. Just be with the breath. Be with whatever's here. And mostly be with the openness. Be devoted to the openness or recognize that that is what you're devoted to. That which welcomes all things. Always. And if some resistance comes, you know, or some agitation or any feeling, take it in your hands and cradle it in the openness. Bathe it in the openness. And once, once you do that, then you return to the sort of global, not doing anything, abiding, enjoying. Until you hear another little yelp of resistance and instead of doing what the resistance tells you which would be to get busy thinking about what you're going to have to eat or what you're going to do when this meditation's over don't stay with a raw feeling of the resistance take it in your hands bathe it in openness let it be Let it taste. The space. And then back to abiding. <laughs> 